Hey folks, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is lab number six. This week in lab, we are going to talk about interfaces. Actually, just one topic for today's lab, so this is going to be a nice short little video. So in the previous lab, we talked about what an abstract class was, and we were able to define an abstract class simply by adding a new class like we would normally do, and then giving it a name. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class, which is not really a class, it's going to be an interface, and I'm going to call it math. All right, so in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this word to interface, interface map. And typically, by convention, you would actually call it IMAP, um, because generally in um, C Sharp, you would, uh, call, um, uh, you would call interfaces with a lowercase i at the beginning to indicate that it's an interface. Um, actually, it would be a capital I is what you would normally do. Um, all right, and I'm, the only thing I'm doing here is I'm changing the file name uh, to match rename file. All right, so now it all matches again. All right, so an interface simply has a bunch of abstract methods in it. And so for uh, this math class, we may have the ability to add numbers and subtract numbers. So I would say something like public int add numbers that would take in int num1 and int num2. And then I might have a public int subtract numbers, which takes in an int num1 and an int num2. So straight away, you'll notice that I didn't actually put any bodies in either of these uh, class, in either of these methods. And that's because they're an abstract method. And you might say, well, I didn't put the word abstract in there, so what makes them abstract? The very fact that they're inside an interface makes them abstract. Once you put something in an interface, it is inherently abstract. Um, okay, so then what good does this do me? How would I ever go about using this? So I'm gonna add another class. And this time I'm going to call it uh, decimal math. So class decimal math is going to implement imath. Now, um, the first thing to notice is that this is a colon, and that's the same way that you um, indicated that one class is a child of another class. The same thing is going on here, um, which is that effectively I'm a child of the interface, but really what I'm doing here is I'm implementing the interface. Um, it's kind of weird that they use the same symbol for two different meanings, but they kind of work and mean the same thing. All right, so the moment that I declare that I'm going to implement this interface, you notice that I'm getting two error messages. It's saying that decimal math does not implement add numbers and it does not implement subtract numbers, and that's not allowed. So I need to go through and I actually need to have methods for add numbers and subtract numbers. Actually, really nicely, if I click this link here, it will go ahead and fill in two bodies for me. Um, and so there we go. Um, I basically got back the two independent parts. I don't need the imath part. I can actually remove that, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but you can see that it's just giving me a very bare body. So now I'm actually going to put in the actual body, which is return num1 plus num2. And in the case of this one, I'm going to return oops, num1 minus num2. Now, I certainly could have typed this out manually. I'm just using a shortcut because it filled in the code for me. Really, all it did was it gave me the exact same definition as before. Um, these were actually declared as public in both cases um, in the interface, and I want them to be public here as well. So now I have a class that I can actually instantiate. So back over in my main program, I can say decimal math. Ugh. Okay, that does not want to tap complete for me. Probably because I spelled it wrong or something. There we go. Decimal math, math, my math equals new decimal math. And that gives me an interface, or it gives me a class that I can now use. So I'm going to prompt the user for a couple of numbers. So I'm going to console.write line, enter number one, and then I'm going to console.read line. Um, and I'm going to convert that into an int 32.parse, whatever they give me in console.readline, and I'm going to store that into an int called num1. And that should have a capital I. That should have a capital I. Let's see here. All right, and now we're going to do the same thing again, this time for num2. And... Just going to change that to a two and that to a two. 
And then I'm going to call the method add numbers and print out the result. So I'm going to say my math, which is the name of the object that I created right up here, dot add numbers. I'm going to pass it num1 and num2. And I'm going to store that result in an int answer. And then finally, I'm going to print out answer is and then plus answer. Okay. So this part of the code really isn't anything very exciting. It's just reading in two numbers. It's calling the method and it's giving me back the answer. So eight plus two, of course, equals 10. And that all makes sense. So none of this really has anything to do with the interface. I just wanted to show you how you would go about using it. This is what a class would look like that is implementing an interface. That's what's happening right here. And once you implement the interface, you must implement methods for all of the methods that are listed in the interface. So if there are two methods here, I must have at least two methods here. I certainly can have other methods, but I must meet at least those two. It's called meeting the contract of the interface. Um, all right, so that's interfaces. I'm gonna rewind just a little bit and we're gonna talk about the difference between interfaces and abstract classes since we dealt with abstract classes last week. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in an abstract class here. Um, and I'm just gonna make one up just so that we can talk about it for a moment. I'm gonna call it stuff. Um, again, terrible name, but here we have it. So this is going to be an abstract class stuff. And when I did this example last week, I gave you a, a method public void do stuff, um, and it had a body. It's just uh, console dot right line hi. Great. So that is what's called a concrete method. And I'm welcome to write concrete methods into an abstract class that is allowed. But I can also put abstract methods. And that's an abstract method. So what's happening here is I have public abstract, uh, there should be a return type void, do other stuff. I'm not putting in a body, I'm just ending the method name with a semicolon to indicate that there is no body here. As a matter of fact, once I say abstract, I cannot put a body in there. So anybody who implements this class or anybody who extends this class or inherits from this class, they're going to have to write a body for do other stuff because they inherited an abstract method. And so if I have a new class underneath this, um, so we're gonna do another add class, and I'll call it more, more stuff, <laughs> terrible names, sorry folks, but more stuff extends or um, is a child of stuff. Now all of a sudden I immediately get an error because it says you haven't implemented the abstract member do other stuff. So in order for this to work, I have to do void do other stuff, and it has to have a body. Why are you doing this? Stop it, because it's the wrong language. Sorry, folks. Console, right line, whatever. It has to have some kind of a body. Um, do other stuff. Um, was it not a void? It might have been. Um, it hides, do other stuff. Oh, yeah. In this case, it's an override of do other stuff. Um, because in the case of stuff, this was abstract. So I'm effectively having to take it and override it to make my own version of it in the child. Um, it's implicit that this is a virtual method meaning that it is allowed to be overridden because it's abstract. Abstract inherently means that it is virtual. So this child class wrote an implementation for do other stuff, so therefore it's happy with that. To be clear, the more stuff class would have access to do stuff because do stuff is a concrete method that was defined in the parent. And since more stuff is a child of stuff, it is able to accept and see that other method. So this class would have the ability to do stuff and do other stuff. It would have both methods available. Okay, so at the last to topic here is to talk about, well, then what's the difference between an interface and an abstract class? It seems like they're kind of the same thing. If I can have an abstract class and all of the methods turn out to be abstract, then isn't that basically an interface? And the answer is yes. Um, I want you to think about it this way. A concrete class, which is every class that you've written before we started talking about abstract and interfaces, 
A concrete class, you have to have all concrete methods, meaning anytime you have a method, you must have a body for the method. In an interface, all the methods are going to be abstract. Every, every method in an, ab in an interface must be abstract, it's by definition. So those are the two extremes. Either you're writing a definition for every method, or you're writing a, a definition for none of the methods. In between that, you have an abstract class, which can be on either end of that scale. If you have an abstract class where all of the methods are actually have bodies, then it's really more like a concrete class. If you have an abstract class where all the bodies are, all the methods are, um, are virtual, sorry, all the methods are abstract, then it's really more like an interface. So concrete class on one extreme, interface on the other extreme, and an abstract class is somewhere in the middle, closer to one end or the other, just depending on how many there are. In the real world, you'll find that a lot of people will use interfaces instead of abstract classes. As a matter of fact, interfaces are way more common than abstract classes, simply because realistically, if you're doing an abstract class, you're usually going to do most of the methods abstract, in which case, why don't you just do it as an interface? There are a couple of cool things about interfaces, which we'll go over in lecture this week, um, or we went over last week, hopefully, um, where you're going to see why people might do this. But the general idea comes down to the same thing I talked about last week with the interfaces, or with the abstract classes, which is that interfaces allow the development manager to put a set of rules on all of the children. They all must implement this. And an example, again, is if you're a video game company, the development manager might create an interface that says, if the character is able to walk, then it needs to know how to move its feet, it needs to know what speed it's moving at, it needs to know how to render itself while it's walking, and those would all be methods that would be defined in the interface, and then each of the bad guys and good guys, if they want to be able to walk, they would say that they're implementing that interface, and then they would have to override that method to explain how they themselves are going to walk. And so again, it's just a way of enforcing across all of the children that there must be a definition for that class. So that's the short version of interfaces this week. Today's lab is about interfaces, so you guys go have some fun with that, and I will see you guys next week.